Hello everybody, I'm uh, very sad not being able to be there with you in Istanbul but nevertheless I'm uh, trying to say a few words about the topic uh, Brian asked me to contribute to this workshop which is uh, scientists attitudes and values towards science communication. Uh, the expression scientific community is often used today as a synonymous for scientists or scientific experts. It is not. Community is a distinctive sociological concept that emphasizes moral density, internal homogeneity and a shared commitment to specific norms. The expression scientific community was introduced in the 50s by historians and sociologists who were beginning to study the norms and operational rules of science as a social institution. A few years before, Robert King Merton had famously identified four institutional imperatives and thereby the professional ethos, which is not the ethics, characterizing the institution of science, universalism, disinterestedness, communism and organized skepticism. It would be hard to identify the equivalent of such professional ethos today. This is not because today's scientists are more morally reprehensible than they used to be. It is not difficult to document in the past serious breaches of Merton's norms in individual behavior which did not cancel their functionality. Criticism and sanction of specific deviant behavior by the scientific community attested actually to the value and functionality of the aforesaid norms. But the point is that contemporary science, which is sometimes referred from the organizational point of view as post-academic, mode 2 science or science 2.0, is not only a quantitatively much broader phenomenon, according to certain estimates like the National Science Foundation, we are talking today about 5.6 million active researchers and about 1.8 million articles published each year in about 30,000 international peer-reviewed scholarly journals, but also a much more global, diversified and fragmented phenomenon which does not distance from the institutional configuration studied by Merton in only one direction. For example, pressures for the privatization of research results are now eroding the pillar of communism, but are also counteracted by other pressures for the more open dissemination and sharing of results and technological innovations. In areas like biomedicine or IT, heterogeneous networks connecting scientific experts with non-experts and quasi-experts patient organizations, citizen groups, users are increasingly replacing traditional expert communities. So, Science 2.0 is anything but monolithic. It comprises movements and subcultures that sometimes assume the features of outright countercultures, as in the case, for example, of biohackers, as they have been defined, or the movement of, for open access to publication especially in its initial subversive phase. These subcultures often incorporate very different, if not contradictory, views of the social role of scientists and therefore their professional ethos. This tangle of norms and values not only challenges the all-encompassing notion of the scientific community as internally cohesive, but it also highlights its permeability. A specific scientific subculture may in fact be cultivated in close interaction with movements and normative and organizational cultures in the broader social context, industrial district, districts, firms, clusters, environmentalist associations, patients groups or mass media. This inevitably gives rise to what organization scholars have called institutional isomorphism, that is, the tendency to assimilate practices and institutional models typical of one's interlocutors. But this also applies to scientists' attitudes and approach to communication with the mass media and the general public. Talking in general about scientists' relationship with the communicative dimension, as it could be the homogeneous expression of a common professional denominator, that is, being a scientist, does not seem possible nowadays. Several studies have already identified significant variety of behaviors and attitudes across world areas, research fields, career stages. In a recent study that builds on the methodology of the key international study in this field, my colleague Barbara Saracino and I tried to include also questions 
about visions and expectations in terms of communication models and dynamics. So the findings, uh, based on a sample of Italian scientists, uh, in, uh, particularly in two big research institutions, point to a significant variety in scientists' attitudes towards the media and the public, which relate to different patterns of engagement in relevant activities, as well as to different models and conceptions of the science-media-public interaction. So a typology was constructed with a two-step cluster analysis after recording the variables, with minus indicating a negative distance uh, with regard to the average of the sample and a positive sign indicating uh, a positive distance from the average of the sample and an equal sign indicating that the type is rather close to the average of the sample. Uh, behavioral variables like contacts with the media, attending training courses, but also uh, visions of how science communication should be more like the deficit model, the dialogue model, or a participatory model, for example, and what is the social relevance, the personal enjoyment. And this is the result, the five types we have found. So one quarter of the scientists we surveyed have a very straightforward attitude to communication and engagement with the public, which is, leave me alone, I have to work. They don't want to deal uh, at all with this, with this aspect. Then there is an almost equally uh, relevant type in quantitative terms, 23%, which we have summarized as, oh no, I have to communicate. So they realize that something has to be done, and, but they don't enjoy uh, doing this particularly. There's another type, 18% of our sample, which acknowledges that's important to communicate for the institution, but provided yeah, he or she is not in charge directly. And finally, uh, there are two types uh, which are actually engaged in communication but in, uh, with totally different visions. Hmm? There is a more dialogic type which is more open to discussion with the, with the public and with audiences. Another one which is uh, mostly about seeing communication as telling what you do in your own terms. So let me explain it in my turn. So further exploring and mapping this diversity of attitudes of scientists and ideas that scientists have with regard to communication and public engagement will be essential in order to understanding the trends, transformation and attitudes of scientists' attitudes to public uh, communication also with a view to developing and strengthening a culture of public engagement in research institutions rather than specific initiatives based on goodwill or individual talent only. Thank you and I wish every you every success and, uh, with the conference and uh, an enjoyable stay in Istanbul. Thank you. Bye bye.